Invincibility is in oneself. Vulnerability is in the opponent. Thus, we may know that there are five essentials for victory. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. He will win who prepared himself waits to take the enemy unprepared. He will win who has military capacity and is not interfered with by the Sovereign. Hence the saying, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. There are five dangerous faults which may affect a general. Recklessness, which leads to destruction. Cowardice, which leads to capture. A hasty temper, which can be provoked by insults. A delicacy of honor, which is sensitive to shame. Over solicitude for his men, which exposes him to worry and trouble. Rapidity is the essence of war. Take advantage of the enemy's unreadiness. Make your way by unexpected routes and attack unguarded spots. You must be swift as the wind, dense as the forest, rapacious as fire, steadfast like a mountain, mysterious as night, and mighty as thunder. It is unlucky to be stubborn in the face of insurmountable odds. Prohibit omens altogether. You can best predict your future by controlling it yourself, not by trusting luck or fate to control it. The secret of getting successful work out of your trained men lies in one nutshell, in the clearness of the instructions they receive. When your strategy is deep and far-reaching, then what you gain by your calculations is much, so you can win before you even fight. When your strategic thinking is shallow and nearsighted, then what you gain by your calculations is little, so you lose before you do battle. Much strategy prevails over little strategy, so those with no strategy cannot but be defeated. Therefore, it is said that victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Thus the good fighter is able to secure himself against defeat, but cannot make certain of defeating the enemy. Hence the saying, one may know how to conquer without being able to do it. To conquer the enemy without resorting to war is the most desirable. 
The highest form of generalship is to conquer the enemy by strategy. So morning energy is keen. Midday energy slumps. Evening energy recedes. Therefore, those skilled in use of arms avoid the keen energy and strike the slumping and receding. These are those who master energy. Weak leaders can wreck the soundest strategy. Forceful execution of even a poor plan can often bring victory. Be where your enemy is not. If he sends reinforcements everywhere, he will everywhere be weak. Whether in an advantageous position or a disadvantageous one, the opposite state should be always present in your mind. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. Hence, a commander who advances without any thought of winning personal fame and withdraws in spite of certain punishment, whose only concern is to protect his people, is the nation's treasure. All men can see the tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. All warfare is based on deception. Therefore, when capable, feign incapacity. When active, inactivity. When near, make it appear that you are far away. When far away, that you are near. Offer the enemy a bait to lure him. Feign disorder and strike him. When he concentrates, prepare against him. When he is strong, avoid him. Anger his general and confuse him. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. Keep him under a strain and wear him down. When he is united, divide him. Attack where he is unprepared when he does not expect you. These are the strategist's key to victory. It is not possible to discuss them beforehand. Now, if the estimates made in the temple before hostilities indicate victory, it is because calculations show one strength to be superior to that of his enemy. If they indicate defeat, it is because these calculations show that one is inferior. With many calculations, one can win. With few, one cannot. How much less chance of victory has one who makes none at all? By this I mean, I examine the situation and the outcome will be clearly apparent. I have three treasures that I keep and prize. One is kindness, second is frugality, and third is not presuming to take precedence over others. By kindness, one can be brave. 
by frugality, one can reach out, and by not presuming to take precedence, one can survive effectively. If one gives up kindness and courage, gives up frugality, and gives up humility for aggressiveness, one will die. The exercise of kindness in battle leads to victory. The exercise of kindness in defense leads to security. Flexibility in our lives means having a fundamental ability to relate to any new environment and excel in it. Instead of fighting it, you greet it with open arms and observe it. Instead of criticizing it, you caress it and understand it. Instead of ignoring it, you make it yours and be one with it. Deep knowledge is to be aware of disturbance before disturbance, to be aware of danger before danger, to be aware of destruction before destruction, to be aware of calamity before calamity. Strong action is training the body without being burdened by the body, exercising the mind without being used by the mind, working in the world without being affected by the world, carrying out tasks without being obstructed by tasks. Do not repeat the tactics which have gained you one victory, but let your methods be regulated by the infinite variety of circumstances. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby, you can be the director of the opponent's fate. He who wishes to fight must first count the cost. <laughs>